which one? So today we're doing a lens comparison video with the baddest 85 millimeter f 1.8 versus the Sony 85 millimeter f 1.4. That's what this video is about. So how do you choose? How do you know what lens to buy? I mean, it's a huge, huge decision. It's a big purchase and you just don't know. So I wanted to do a lens comparison video with you guys and to show you the difference between the two and help you make that decision. But I also wanted to chat with you really quickly about renting lenses. So my friends down at Horn Photo have this amazing selection of lenses to rent. Um, and pretty much your local camera shop will probably have the same thing too. Now I got these down from um, my friends down at Horn Photo and I'm testing them out. But I wanted to let you guys know that it's an option. So basically you can go rent a lens for $25, $50, or $100 depending on what you're looking for. If you want to rent it for a day or a week. Um, and then that way you can test it out before you actually buy it. I find that to just be super awesome. So I've rented a bunch of lenses um, from my local camera shop, which is Horn Photo, and um, it's saved me a lot. And so it's just a really awesome option that I didn't know about before. And being able to rent a lens, there's so many reasons why you would want to rent a lens, but to test it out is one of those reasons and to see if that's actually the lens you want to purchase. I mean, it's going to save you a lot of money. Yeah, you might be out the 25, 50 or hundred dollars, but at least you're not out that 1000 to $2,000, right? I mean, at least you didn't go purchase this um, big purchase and be disappointed with it. And that way you can really make a good informed decision. So, um, I'm testing these guys out today and um, seeing the difference and comparing them and helping you guys with that decision as well. And so I wanted to to share this with you. Um, a lot of people have asked me to do more lens comparison videos and so that's what we're doing today. So let's talk about these two guys. Typically an 85 millimeter lens is used for portraits. So I'm going to bring in a special guest. Not really. It's Yoda. We're going to go out and we're going to be taking some pictures of Yoda with the two different lenses. Normally an 85 um, isn't typically used for landscape photography per se. I am going to try it out with landscape stuff to see what I think about it, but 85s traditionally are used for portraits and I wanted to share that with you guys. I know that typically I only share landscape stuff with you, but we're going to play around with taking fun photos of Yoda. So first impressions, this thing's a lot lighter than this thing, right? So the baddest feels lighter. We're going to do a weight comparison and the Sony just feels heavier. You can just feel them. Now you can also tell that the size is a huge difference, right? So that's in itself something big. Um, both of them come with the little lens hood, which is great. Um, so that's it with the lens hood. Now this has an actual setting where you can see where you're focused to. So it'll light up and it'll show you like when you're focused to infinity or whereabouts you are, which is insanely helpful when you're taking night photos or when you're in, you know, any sort of dark situation. That's really awesome. I love that. Um, now this guy, same thing. It has a button to push in order to be able to get it clicked on there, right? So you heard it snap. Um, you have to push that button. It has to lock in. But the one thing with this one is it has an aperture ring. So, and it clicks to it or you can make it smooth, which is going to be really awesome as far as if you wanted to do video and change the aperture in a smooth way, like that's really cool. So that's the like main differences that you see um, just right off the bat. So let's weigh them and see the difference between the weights and then we'll start playing around with photos. So let's go. 
time for the judge. Battis, 85 millimeter, 1.8. One pound, three ounces. Sony, 85 millimeter, 1.4. Two pounds, almost two pounds, one ounce. Now the Sony is an F14 wider aperture, so it's bound to be bigger and heavier than the Battis 1.8, but that's almost a pound difference. There you have it. I made it out here to my spot with my model Yoda <laughs> and we're gonna be starting with the Sony 1.4 and um, just taking a couple shots of her and seeing how it goes and then we're gonna switch. All right, so here's the images with the Sony at 1.8. So I wanna compare the two the same. So this Sony goes down to F1.4, but I'm gonna be shooting both at F1.8. So here's those images. So the cool thing about the Sony is it has an aperture ring. Now what that is going to do is it's going to be really cool for video because you can get something like this. Now, of course, you can recreate that without the aperture ring, but the aperture ring makes it nice and smooth. So I really like that part. So here are the images with the baddest at F1.8. Okay, so let's compare these side by side, Sony versus Battis. Let's talk about the bokeh first. So the Sony has a nice, soft, creamy bokeh compared to the Battis, which is a little bit sharper and has a slight swirl to it. So it's a slight counterclockwise swirl. Really look at the two photos and notice the difference between the bokeh. Let me know in the comments below if you can see the swirl in the baddest bokeh. Next, I wanted to really point out that the Sony had a bit of chromatic aberration in this scenario. So that's that blue hue around Yoda's ears. Now, looking at all the baddest images, there was not a single one that had chromatic aberration to it. I just wanted to show you that the Sony did have it. I'm not saying that the baddest wouldn't in a different light and a different scenario, but in this one, the Sony really picked up on it. Finally, I want to talk about vignetting. The baddest has a bit more of a vignette than the Sony. So what that is, is around the edges of the photo, specifically the corners, you can see that it's a little bit darker on the baddest image compared to the Sony image. That's the little extra vignette that the baddest has.
If you want to read a little bit more and compare the Baddest versus the Sony, make sure to head on over to my blog. The link is in the description below. You guys can read my thoughts on the differences, the experience that I had in the field, and um, a more detailed information sheet about the Sony versus Baddest. So, first impressions and kind of like the download. So the Sony's cool, I like it, it's heavy. This bad boy is about $1,800, um, and you saw the weight difference earlier, and then um, the thing that I notice is it's noisy, so it, it's constantly trying to focus, and it's making like a noisy, um, I don't want to say grinding, but that, you know, that focus sound, it's constantly doing that. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, and it's really slow to focus. So in autofocus, it's, you know, it's readjusting and trying to focus and it's taking a while. Now the baddest right here is about $1,200 and it seemed a lot quicker to focus and there's no noise to it. So both of them have their pros, um, $1,200 or $1,800 slower to focus and autofocus and it's very noisy good thing about it is it goes down to f 1.4 so of course it's going to be more expensive um and then it has the aperture ring which i found really cool um and then this guy 1200 dollars it's lighter so i think that that's really great um, it focuses a lot quicker but it does only go to f 1.8 so you're missing that little bit um, which you know can make or break it for some people so anyways that's kind of what I'm thinking about these two in particular um, I was really turned off by the noise I'm not gonna lie I really didn't like the slow autofocus here and the the noise that it made constantly um, with the Sony so anyways that's just something just maybe my own personal preference but something that I don't really like and I like it to be able to focus quickly um, which it just was having a little bit of a difficult time doing so with a moving subject like Yoda um, I missed a bunch of shots because she would move and it wasn't focused then um, but anyways, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think if I were to choose, I would be choosing the baddest. Just, this is my first time playing with it, but I'd be choosing the baddest for the reasons that it's cheaper, it's lighter, and um, I typically don't go down uh, below F1.8 unless I'm doing like a really close up portrait. And then, um, cheaper lighter quicker autofocus and it doesn't make any noise so anyways that's the lens comparison for you i hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did give it a big old thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more from me by clicking that subscribe button and i'll see you in my next video